welcome back uh, to this uh, VTE Sectional program. In the model 1, we have discussed about the basics of neural networks, what is actually an artificial neuron, what is the functions of, uh, what are the functions of the artificial neuron and what is meant by the supervised learning and what is actually the unsupervised learning and how we can train the network, what is actually a basic perceptron, what is meant by the perceptron learning rule and what is about the perceptron convergence theorem so that we can ensure that the perceptron is learning, right? I think perceptron already we discussed is the smallest unit that is available in a neural network, right? So how I can train or how I can teach the neural network so that the neural network get the required training skill set and it can give the required outputs whenever we are going to give some tests, right? So this is what actually we discussed in the model 1. And the model one is mainly restricted with the categories. I think yesterday, previous class, we discussed about what are the categories, right? So, whenever we are presenting some data, right, either it is in the supervised or unsupervised learning, learning. and in particular, in the case of unsupervised learning, we are going to categorize only into two categories, right? Either it can be 1 and 0, or it can be 1 or minus 1, right? So, it is going to be a category 2, 1 and 2. And also, we have just discussed about the convex hulls, right? So, what is going to be the nature of the data set? And in all these cases, we discussed about a linearly separable convex hulls, right? Or linearly separable data sets. So, what is meant by linearly separable? You can just draw a straight line between the convex hulls, right? So, there is actually a straight line or it can be a hyperplane that can easily separate two types of data. So far, actually, we have discussed all these things in the model 1. When we get into this model 2, we will be discussing, suppose if the data set is not linearly separable, right? Suppose if there is going to be some overlapping, right? We, we have already discussed something like what is actually a convex shape and convex hull. So, this is actually not convex, right? So, here I am going to have a point, here I am going to have a point and if you join these two points, then there is actually some point in between which is outside the range. So, this is actually not a convex shape. And what is actually the convex hull? Every point that connects any points inside the uh, range that should be connected and all the points should lie inside the range itself, right? Say for example, I am taking one more shape here. So, take any two points here and you just connect it so that everything will be connected only inside. So, this is actually a convex. And here we are going to have two different sets. The first set is something like this, the second set is something like this. So, this is actually the category of data C1, this is actually the category of data C2 and these two are not linearly separable. Why it is not linearly separable? Because we cannot insert a straight line or we cannot insert a hyperplane in between. So, there is some sort of overlapping is possible. So, in that case, these two things can be termed as a linearly non-separable or non-separable data. So, what we are going to with this type of data? How we can do that? So, this is what actually we are going to deal with in the unit uh, model 2. And also, we will be discussing a few points about the back propagation algorithm and what is the uh, de definition, how, what is the derivation and how we can apply the back propagation algorithm. So, these are all the things we will be discussing in the model 2, right? To start with, Yesterday, I think we have already discussed these points, the perceptron learning and the non-separable sets, right? So, this is what actually a non-separable set, uh, set and how we can train a neural network for this type of data. So, what is actually the theorem says, given a finite set of training patterns X, there exists a number M such that if we run the perceptron learning algorithm beginning with any initial set of weights W1, then any weight vector, right? Some random weight vector, we can call it as W k, produced in the course of the algorithm will satisfy this particular condition, right? So, this is actually the perceptron learning and non-separable test theorem, right? We will get into this. Whenever I am going to have a, a category like this, an overlapping category or a linearly non-separable case, we have already discussed there are two solutions for handling this particular case. The first solution is reduce the number of points. So, how I can reduce the point? Already we discussed uh, AND gate is actually completely linearly separable. We can do that. OR gate, it is linearly separable, no problem. But if you go for an XOR gate, 
already we, we have studied. So, there will be 4 points will be there and these 4 points will be this will be 0, this will, uh, this will be 1 and this will be 1, the other 2 points will be 0. So, using a single layer perceptron, we cannot solve this. So, what are all the possible solutions? We have given 2 solutions. The first thing is reduce the number of points. So, instead of 4 points, whether I can make it into a 3 points. What is actually the procedure here? Now, we have taken the x1 and x2 are the inputs and the xr gate is divided into 2 things. One is actually the first stage is going to be the r, the second the stage will be trained with the NAND and the final stage will be trained with NAND. And so, instead of a single layer, we will be having one more layer added to that. And also, here actually what we can do is, first you are going to map from one uh, area to another area, right, or from one set of data to another data set. So, here actually what we are going to do is, y is actually the function 1 of x. So, we are going to define a new term called y1, y1 is actually equal to x1 plus x2, that is actually the R gate and y2 equal to x1 x2 bar. So, this is going to be the AND gate. So, what we are going to do is, we are going to take 2 inputs and we are not going to straight away give this, we are going to convert it into some other domain y1 and y2, right. So, now actually what happens, we will see. Here, when x1 and x2 are there, when we operate with this y1 and y2, we will be getting, this is my y1 and this is my y2 which is actually the R operation and the NAND operation, right. So, when we are getting this table and if we and these two things, then what will happen? 0 and 1 is going to be 0, 1 and 1 is going to be 1, 1 and 1 is 1 and 1 and 0 is going to be 0. So, when we are operating with an XR gate, when we are operating with an XR gate, this is not separable. But when we convert this XR gate into another domain, right by using two gates one is actually a simple r gate the second one is simply a nand gate and when we convert this x1 and x2 into y1 and y2 we will be getting 0 1 1 0 which is actually quite possible to separate so here actually what we have done is 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 1 now after this we are going to make this 0 0 will not be here because these two things are actually combined together so, 0 1, 1 0, 1 1 and you can easily separate this, right. So, this is actually the method 1 when I can, how I can separate the uh, non-separable data, this is method number 1 and in the case of method number 2, increase the dimension. So, what is meant by increase the dimension? Of course, the same concept, the x1 and x2 are here actually and I am going to give the same data, no issues. Here actually what we are going to do is straight away we think we will go, go here. Now, I have, have x1 and I have x2. Now, I am going to have an x3 which is equal to x1 and x2, right. So, in this case actually what happens? 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0 and 1, 1 and it is going to be 1. So, here by introducing an additional 3 dimension, it is not going to be a 2 dimension it is going to be a 3 dimension factor. So, in that case what happens, I am going to operate with the 3 data, instead of 2 data, I am going to make it into 3 data, that is a 3 dimensional data. So, I will be getting, I will be getting 0 0 0, right, 0 1 0, 1 0 0 and this is actually lying in the bottom layer and this the topmost 1 1 1 will be going here instead of here. So, there is going to be a layer separation, right. So, in the previous case, when we had a 2D uh, data, right, when we have only x1 and x2, we used a straight line to separate. But now, actually, what happens? It has become a 3D data because 0, 0, 0. So, 3 data are there. So, it is going to form a cube, and since I am going to form a cube, I am going to have a hyperplane. I am going to have a hyperplane, so that I can separate this particular data. So, these are all the basic two methods using which we can operate a non-linearly separable data that can also be processed. So, this of course, we have already discussed. Now, we have two corollaries, the first one says if in a finite set of training patterns x, right. So, every time actually we have to have a training set of data and each pattern x k has integer components x i k, then 
the perceptron learning algorithm will visit a finite set of distinct vectors, weight vectors w k. Actually what happens here means, uh, there is actually a set of weights available and each and every time we will be providing data one by one, right. I think uh, you just uh, can assume we have to have a, uh, we have to identify around 1000 images are there, right. I am going to have some 1000 images and this 1000 images has so many dogs and so many cats. So, these are all actually images of so many data is actually available. We will assume something around 500 dogs are there in this group and 500 cats are also in this group. So, each and every image say for example, I just I am giving some simple value each and every image will be having something around 8 by 8 data. So, that is 8 pixel by 8 pixels right. So, each and every image will be having only 64 pixels. Actually, it is not possible, maybe it may not be possible, but for assumption actually I am taking a simple data. So, now what actually we have to do is, first we are going to train each and everything and I assume the dogs and the cats images are linearly separable. So, there are some distinguishing factor, so that I can linearly separate the dogs and the cats. Now, actually what happens here, for first time I am giving actually a dog and I am saying it is a dog right. So, it can be classified. So, the weight will be aligned or weight will be tuned in such a way that whenever I am giving this particular dog image, then the output says it is a dog. Then I am going to give a cat image. Now, the output may be a dog image or cat image. Suppose, if it is a cat image, okay, the weights are already pakka, no problem, I need not change it. Suppose, when I give a cat image, it shows it is a dog. So, in that case, I have to update the weights and already we discussed about the weight updation procedure and we are going to slowly update the weights, so that whenever I am going to give a cat image, it will show it is a cat. So, one by one actually we are going to give keep on giving the images. So, we will select something around uh, out of 500 images, I am going to select some 300 images and here I am going to select some 300 images of cat. So, totally 600 data I am going to give one by one and for each and every case the weights will be tuned and I will be saying this is actually a dog. Of course, it is going to be a supervisory in case it is a supervisory and it is going to be a dog, it is going to be a cat. So, I am going to say that and the weights will be tuned right. So, that whenever I give a dog data then it learns it is dog and whenever I give a cat data it says it is a cat. So, this tuning will happen. The main problem is suppose it is tuned to a dog. Now, whenever I am going to give another image either it may be a dog or cat and suppose the weights has to be altered some minor changes has to be done right. So, the weights will be keep on updating there will be so many iterations will be coming there only after that I need one set of finite weights right one set of finite weights that is available or that is there that can classify both my dog images and the cat images. So, I should be able to find out what type of weights or what is the set of weight that can classify a dog from a cat. Fine, sir. So, this is what actually we have done and for a finite set of training patterns x the same thing with individual patterns x k having integer components x i k the perceptron learning algorithm will infinite time produce a weight vector that correctly classifies all training patterns if and only if x is linearly separable and leave and revisit a specific weight vector if and only if is linearly non-separable. So, each and every time it is going to do the rework right. So, the weight will get updated each and every time and in that case sometimes the linearly non-separable may take infinite number of iterations because we do not have a straight line or we do not have a hyperplane that can distinguish these two sets or these two images. In those cases, it may run infinitely without learning. So, what is actually the solution for that? Uh, we have seen two solutions or the other solution is or the other solution can be something like you skip some points there will be a loss of accuracy will be there right. Say for example, if I am going to give some uh, uh, 300 dogs right, it will uh, find out almost 299 dogs, but one dog it says it is a cat 
right? Or I am going to give some 300 CAT images. It, it can identify 298 CAT images, but 2 CAT images it strongly classifies as dogs. So, there may be some errors if it is allowed, then we can do that. Otherwise, what will happen? It will keep on training with infinite loop sometimes it happens. So, how you can avoid this issue, right? Because it should not run forever. It should not keep on training forever. So, what are actually the solution for avoiding this? This algorithm called as the pocket algorithm gives a solution for that. So, what is meant by pocket algorithm? Just we will say the philosophy of this. The incorporate positive reinforcement in a way to reward weights that yield a low error solution. So, there will be some error will be there that we have to accept no other go, but we will try to reduce the error. Right? So, what set of weights can find out maximum correct answers? When we are going to give some 100 test vectors, one set of weights can identify 99 correct answers and only one false answer. So, we are going to find out a low error solution in that case. Now, actually what happens here? The pocket algorithm works by remembering the weight vector that yields the largest number of correct classifications on the consecutive run. Right? So, simply actually we are going to have one more uh, packet. Right? So, what is actually a packet? The packet is uh, simply we can say a packet is simply a group of weights. So, we call it as a weight packet. We call it as a weight packet when one particular set of weights identifies something around 19 uh, dogs properly, no problem. Then what we will do is, we will put that particular weight in the weight packet. Right? So, even if you are not getting the correct 100 percent answer later, whatever the data available in the weight packet can be used to, to find out almost 90 percent of the dogs or cats. So, when we are going to keep on training, the best uh, possible uh, weights, right? That will be always kept in the packet. Suppose I am getting a new set of weights which can identify 95 percent of the cats and dogs. So, what will happen? The new set of weights will replace the old set of weights in the packet. So, the intention of the packet is it will be having a set of weights which is going to give the correct answers for a maximum number of runs that is what actually the packet. right? So, a consecutive run, a so much of data is given here and the largest number of correct answers for which data we are getting, weight data we are getting, that data will be placed in the packet. This, this weight vector is kept in the pocket and we denote it as a W pocket. right? And while updating the weights in accordance with the perceptron, see it is packet, right? P O C K, fine. While updating, the weights in accordance with the perceptron learning, if a weight vector is discovered that it has a longer run of consecutive correct classifications, then one in the pocket, then the replace the old weight packet in the new one. right? So, already it has a packet, so which is actually having the 90 percent correct runs. So, consecutively it has classified 90 correct data. Now, what happened actually next to set of, but there is some one error. So, we slightly modified uh, some uh, weightage or uh, some weight and then the new set of weights can identify 95 consecutive correct data. right? It can identify 95 images correctly. So, what we have to do? Already the data can could find out 90. Now, actually I am getting a better set of weights which can identify 95 set, uh, data. So, I am going to place this data in the W pocket. right? So, this is actually the pocket algorithm just you are going to have a pocket and you will be saving the best possible weight that will be available in the packet at all the times. right? So, what is going to be the pocket algorithm and operation summary actually here we can say an adjusted non separable training set. right? So, here actually x which is union of x 1 and x 1 dash we can say comprising the augmented vectors x 1 belongs to some r. And here what we are doing going to do is we are going to initialize, right? So, first vector, right, we call it as W1 weight vector that I am going to put it in the packet. Then for each and every output, I will be calculating what is the run length and what is the maximum run length. So, every time when the system identifies it correctly, I will increase the run length. So, for 1, it has identified correctly. 2 identified correctly, 3 identified correctly. So, I will be going up to the run length. 
at some point say for example, after 50 current detections one one uh, one image right it actually denoted as it uh, classified it as a false category. So, what is going to be the maximum run length it is going to be 50 right and what is actually the current available weight that will be stored in the W packet. So, this is what actually the purpose of initialization and how it runs the same thing I am going to select an uh, x from that uh, random data and uh, randomly I am going to select of course and if this particular data the w int x which is going to be the input multiplied by this weight and after the manipulation if it is giving 0 greater than 0 right or it is classified correctly then I am going to increase the run length by 1 and if the run length is greater than the maximum run length then what I am going to do I am going to put the current weights in the packet right then I what I will do the run length will be saved into the maximum run length then the I will make the run length as 0 and I will keep on doing this and whenever actually there is a wrong thing I am going to update my weights again I will start from the 0 right I think you might have got the concept. So, the pocket algorithm simply says how many correct identifications are done suppose one set of weight vector identifies it 50 times then that particular weight vector will be available in the pocket again we will reset then if the next set of weights can update up to 65 then the new set of vector weight vector will be replaced the old set of weight vectors in the pocket and this process proceeds and at any point of time I will be having a better data in the pocket even if the tuning is not fully done because of it is a uh, linearly non separable data, but the data that is available in the packet at any time can be a best solution with the minimum number of errors that is possible right this is actually the case. Now, the pocket convergence theorem simply it is a theorem it say states given a finite state set of training examples. So, there will be some training examples, but it is actually a finite set and from this x and a probability p is less than 1 there exists an integer k, k 0 such that after every k is greater than that k 0 iterations of the pocket algorithm the probability that the pocket weight vector w p is optimal exceeds the p. So, what is actually the probability of getting a new data or a wrong data when I am going to have the probability of this w packet is better than that probability then this pocket convergence theorem is actually can be proven right this is the pocket convergence theorem. And now so far actually we have discussed about two things right. So, what is actually done is the first thing is how we can do with a separation of 1 and 0 a separation of 1 and minus 1. What happens I want to train a neural network which is not which is going to give some real number of inputs not a binary outputs right. Say for example, in the initial case actually what we did I have I have given some AND gate right say for example, in the case of AND gate uh, or I will use this better. So, in the case of AND gate actually my input is going to be 0 0 0 0 1 1 1 0 sorry 0 1 0. 1 0 0 1 1 1 right. So, my output is going to be only zeros or 1s or even I can take it as minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. So, it is going to be some only 2 values it is a logics all right. Suppose, if I want to have some real numbers here if I want to have some real numbers instead of the binary outputs what are all the changes to be done that is what actually we are going to see in the next case. Right. So, here we are going to see the linear neurons and a linear error. So, in this case what I am going to do is I am not going to get an output something like this. As I already told you it will, it will not be getting the correct output right it is not going to be 1 or 0 it is not going to be it is not going to be minus 1 or 1 I am going to get some other value. So, in that case what I have to do just we will see here. Yes, a consider a training set of the form a t is actually the set of inputs are there and the set of weights are there and the x k belong to some r and d k belongs to some r r n plus 1 that range is there 
and to allow the desired output to vary smoothly or continuously over some time interval. A linear signal function S k which is equal to Y k can be given as S k t into W k t. Of course, there is no change here. The same equation whatever we used, of course, the same thing will be done here. As I, as I already told you, my input is going to be x will be given to some w 1. Similarly, my x 2 is given through w 2 and uh, all these things are actually connected to a uh, simple and combiner, right, which is going to be an arithmetic combiner and the final output will be given, but the final output will not be binary in this case, right. So, we are going to have a smooth landing, all right. It is going to be any value between 0 and 1. It is not only 0 or 1, it can be any value in between 0 and 1. So, in that case what we have to do? So, my S, S k or y k whatever it is, we can call it as S or y, no problem, right. Sometime we call it as v, again the naming it is not an issue, right. So, the S k or y k is equal to the x k t and the w k which is actually the vectors. So, x is the input vector, w is the weight vector the linear error E k is calculated. The linear error E k due to the presented training pair x k and d k is the difference between the desired output d k and the neuronal signal s k. So, here what we are going to do is my E k is equal to d k minus s k and what is actually s k? s k can be x, uh, x t transpose into w k, right. So, we are going to compute the error function here, but here the error function is not only 0 or 1, it can be any value in between 0 and 1. So, in that case what actually we have to do? We have to go for a function called normalization. We are going to have a function normalization. So, what is actually normalization? It gives what is the distance between or what is going to be the magnitude of that particular error, right. So, that is actually the normalization function we will be introducing, right. So, here the operational details of this alpha LMS, alpha LMS actually stands for least mean square and an alpha LMS error correction is proportional to the error itself, right. You can easily compute that whenever there is a change in the error, the e of alpha LMS error correction will also be done, right. And each iteration reduces the error by a factor of this eta, eta already we have discussed it is going to be the learning factor, right and n controls the stability and speed of the convergence, sorry it is not n, it is eta. The eta controls the stability and speed of the convergence and normally the stability is ensured in the range of uh, 0 to 2. So, the eta value can be in between 0 and 2. If the value is too low, it will take a long time for training. If the value is too high, then the stability may be affected. So, this is actually the operational details of the alpha LMS. Of course, we are going to have the same set of network here. So, here there is a input 1 and operated by W naught weight. This can be considered as the bias and x 1 k, right. So, this is actually a weight vector from the node x 1 and that is operated by W 1 k set of weights. Similarly, x 2 k, x n k up to W n k. And what is going to be the final output? S k equal to S k equal to X k in X k transpose into W k, whatever we have already discussed. Now, how I am going to update the weights? So, already we have seen so many methods. Now, actually what I am going to do is W k plus 1, it is a new weight, is the old weight W k plus eta, it is a factor of uh, that is the uh, learning factor. E k is actually the old weight into x k and what is going to be the modulus of this x k. So, that is actually the norm function, right. So, this normalization function is going to give what is the error. It is not only the pure error 1 or 0, it is going to be a, uh, I mean it is going to be a error that linearly varies, right. So, here actually the change in w k, we can simply consider the change in w k can be considered as eta e k divided by x k into x k divided by x k that is the norm x k which is which can be written as eta cap and e k into x cap of k, right. So, this is actually what is going to be the change in error after this. What is change in error? W k plus 1 difference W k. So, either the weight may increase or the weight may decrease. In that case, what is going to be the expression here? 
So, this alpha LMS works with the normalized training patterns. Of course, this is what actually we said. First, actually, we are giving one set of data and the setup is actually trained. Now, I am going to give another training data. Now, actually, what happens here? The old weights will be disturbed, right? There will be some minimum disturbance. But the main advantage is when we are going to collectively tune it, right? So, for example, this is actually WK and there will be a change in this. So, every time the weight gets updated and we will be having an overall weight which can effectively handle for all the set of inputs, for all the set of inputs. So, here actually that is the expression WK plus 1 which can be written as WK plus eta into E cap K and X cap K. This is the function here. And what is DK? It is actually the DK divided by the normalized function of XK and X cap K is actually the X cap divided by the normalized function of XK. And what is going to be the operational summary here in order to find out the uh, least mean square error? So, given a training set of T, right, comprising of augmented vectors, the XK that belongs to that range and, uh, and the corresponding desired real valued outputs, DK belongs to that R. And uh, here actually the W is belong to some real number, some small random vector and a weight change tolerance T is again permitted and then repeat this particular algorithm. So, what we are going to do? Take one set of inputs and give it to the for the training, compute this function and compute what is going to be the E k, what is going to be the error, which can be computed as the desired value and the obtained value, right. S is actually the obtained value from here by computing x k transpose into w k and d k can be the desired value. So, the difference between these two things is actually called as the error and the weight has to be updated as per the equation we have already discussed. So, w k plus 1 w k eta, e, uh, eta into e k and what is going to be the normalized function, what is going to be the distance or what is going to be the magnitude. And uh, the average of this change in w k over a epoch is less than the t. So, till that period we can do that. So, we, have, we will be saying something like this. Suppose if the error is less than 0.00001 right or what we can say is every time it is going to be a loop and each and every time we assume that there is some sort of learning is happening and when this loop is running for something around 1 lakh times right then we can say we can terminate the loop and whatever the weight available in the final value can be used for our applications right. So, the tuning has been already done. So, this is actually the alpha LMS the operational summary or the simple procedure for this. Now, we will be seeing a MATLAB simulation again. We are going to have a set of equations, right. Of course, do not consider this. This is actually given as a simple example. Do not use this. We are going to take a line and the line is given as y equal to 0.5 x. So, the slope is 0 0.5 and the uh, intercept is actually the 0 0.333 and we are going to generate a scatter 200 points. Of course, in the MATLAB we are having a random functions or that which can generate some random value and we are going to place these random values in plus or minus 0 0.1 interval and in the y direction and this is achieved by first generating a random scatter in the range of 0 to 1. We are going to generate a random number in the range of 0 to 1. Then stretching it to the interval of minus 1 to 1. So, we are going to make this 0 to 1 into minus 1 to 1 and finally scaling it to point plus or minus 0 0.1. So, the range is going to be only plus or minus 0 0.1. So, from minus 1 to plus 1, uh, minus 1 to plus 1 it will be ranged to plus minus 0 0.1 to plus 0 0.1. So, just by dividing by 10, by scaling down actually I can get the value. When I am going to generate this particular data, my graph will be coming like this, right. So, here actually it is going to be something around 0 0.33 we can say and I will be having a straight line over this and I will be generating something around 200 points which will be randomly selected by the MATLAB functions. Right, and this compute the simulation of this alpha LMS algorithm. So, how I am going to classify this particular algorithm over this? So, the MATLAB program for this alpha LMS learning. So, here the maximum points are 200 already we have given, x is equal to line space point, uh, to 0, 0,2.5 
under maximum points we are going to generate. Of course, these functions are already available in MATLAB, right? Uh, we will be having a small session on MATLAB. I will be introducing what are all the functions that can be used here, fine. And uh, this is actually the straight line equation y equal to mx plus c format. And uh, here actually the m value is 0.5, the c is actually the 0 0.0, the 0 0.333. And this is actually a random function, so I am going to scatter this and this uh, EP is equal to 0 0.1 and what is going to be the D? It is going to scatter this 2 into scatter minus 1 into EP plus Y and the eta value is 0 0.01 and the weight updation, weight value can be given as 3 star into 2 star random function of this. So, we are going to random is the weights. So, by writing a program like this, I am going to make a loop. So, that for 1 is equal to, I mean for loop is equal to 1, 1 to 50 and the random index equal to random PERM 200, right. So, again I am going to random is this. For j is equal to 1 to maximum points, the random index is generated and each and every time I am going to calculate the S value. S value is calculated by what is going to be the W1, what is going to be the W2 and what is going to be the corresponding input and I am going to calculate the error and I am going to update the error. W1 can be updated with this uh, W1 into eta plus the previous error and similarly W2 will be updated. So, by looping this for 50 times, I can find out what is going to be the alpha elements value. A stochastic setting. So, so far actually what we have done is, uh, we have taken some uh, sampled selection from the overall data, right. Say for example, I have some 1000 data are available and out of 1000 data, I will be selecting the best samples that is useful for training the network. But here actually what we are going to do is, assuming that the training set T is well defined in advance is incorrect when the setting is stochastic. So, I am going to have some random value, stochastic means simply random. So, I am not going to select the proper data set, but there will be a some random data set is actually coming here. In such a situation, instead of deterministic patterns, we have a sequence of samples x d and d k assumed to be drawn from a statistically stationary population of the process. So, by some of the statistic means, right, not by a proper way, I am going to randomly select some data and that will be useful for training the set. And for adjustments of the neuron weights in response to the some pattern dependent error measure, the error computation has to be based on the expectation of the error over the ensemble. So, the definition of the mean squared error. So, so far actually we have discussed the alpha LMS, hereafter we will be discussing about the mean squared error. What is meant by mean squared error? I am going to square it and then I will be calculating the mean. Right. So, whenever I am going to calculate the square, what will happen actually, even if it is going to be plus value or minus value, the resultant value is going to be plus and I am going to take the average and I will try to reduce this mean squared error, so that the training will properly happen in the network. This is what actually we are going to see. Now, we start with this definition of the mean squared error MSC, right. So, already we discussed about the LMS least mean squared value. So, here we will be discussing about the mean squared error. So, almost all are actually equal terms. And what is going to be the mean squared error? So, we will be having some error, something like it can be minus 2 or plus 2, whatever it is. So, we are going to square it. So, we will be checking only the magnitude. So, in both the cases, I will be getting 4 and I am going to take the average of these things, right. Suppose, I am going to have a very big positive error, say for example, positive 100 and I am going to have a very big negative error. And if I am going to take the mean of all these things, right. So, 100 plus 100 square and minus 100 square and if I take it, again I will be getting the same value, right. So, here I will be getting a 100 square is going to be 10,000, here again 10,000, I am going to average it. So, I will be getting the 10,000 as the mean square. So, that is actually called as the mean squared error, that is actually MSC. And here we introduce the square error on a pattern x k as uh, the error value, that is the error e k that can be written as 1 by 2 into d k is actually the desired results what we are going to get it and the x t x k t right is actually the input vector w k is the weight vector and the whole square right. So, this is actually the input this is going to be the output. So, that I mean this is the desired value this is the output. So, this will find out what is the error and I am going to square it and why I need actually this 1 by 2 
this 1 by 2 is needed actually whenever I differentiate this 2 can be cancelled. So, it is only a reduction in the magnitude. So, by dividing the value by 2, we are going to reduce only the magnitude. So, that does not matter. So, I can straight away add this 1 by 2 here. So, in that case, this value d k minus x k t w k can be written as e k and this is written as 1 by 2 into e k square. Now, this can be in the form of a minus b the whole square format. So, I can expand this. So, 1 by 2 and this is going to be d k square and 2 minus 2 d k x k t into w k and x k t square w k square this can very well be written as w k transpose into x k into x k transpose into w k. So, this can easily be written like this. So, this equation becomes half into d k square 2 d k x k transpose w k plus w k transpose x k x k transpose w k because either we can have w k transpose into x k as well as x k transpose into w k both are actually ok. And what is going to be the assumption? The weights are held fixed at w k while computing the expectation. So, what we are going to do is whenever we are going to calculate one particular set of weight during that period the weights are not going to be changed. So, for one particular set of weights, we will be doing this computation that is what actually the assumption we are going to make it. Now, what is going to be the mean squared error? Now, that can be computed by taking the expectation on both the sides. Now, we actually we are giving a new term called expectation. So, what is going to be the expectation? Expectation in the error, right. So, that is actually called as E of this E k, right. So, expectation in the error is of this is going to be a constant. So, we can relieve it and the expectation in the desired output, right. So, what is the expectation of the desired output minus the expectation of the first term plus the expectation of the second term, right. So, we are going to split this into these two things, right. So, we are going to cancel this 2 and 2 will be cancelled. So, I will be getting, so this 2 and 2 will be cancelled. So, I will be getting d k x k transpose into w k what is going to be the expectation and we are going to keep this weight is fixed at w k. So, I am not going to change the w k. So, I will be having only the variations in the d k and the x k t. So, where d k is actually the desired output, x k t is actually the input vector that is given to this. Similarly, the next term half into w k t again this weight factor is going to be fixed. So, I have taken it out. So, that is no expectations and the expected values of x k into x k t, x k transpose and this w k is again it is going to be a constant. So, now in this case actually we have uh, defined a term called expectation of what is the error and for that what is the expectation of the input, what is the expectation in the desired output fine. Now, what is actually the, our problem to find the optimal weight vector that minimizes the mean square error. So, we are going to have a different weight vectors, the weight will be continuously tuned and at some point of time I will be having the minimum square error. How to reduce the square mean square error of this? So, that is actually our target. Now, for this what I am going to do is I am going to have some cross correlations. So, we actually we are going to operate it on a vector whether I can convert it to a scalar product, right. So, when it is going to be a scalar output. I can easily find out what is going to be the error and the scalar magnitude can be reduced so that I can minimize what uh, the minimum amount of error I can get it. So, in this case for convenience of expression we define the pattern vector p. Now, I am introducing a new term called pattern vector, right. So, the pattern vector p will be consisting of the expectation of d k into x k t where d k is the output and x k t are the inputs which is equal to the expectations in all the desired values. So, this is going to be d k, d k into x 1 k and uh, up to the d k into x n k, right. For all the values of inputs, what is the output? So, this is going to be the expectation and p is the cross correlation between the desired scalar output, right. The desired scalar output is this d k and the input vector x k. So, when we multiply these two things, I will be getting a scalar output, it is not going to be a vector output, right. So, I am going to have a cross correlation from vector to scalar 
and the input correlation matrix again this is going to be a new term which is actually we are going to call it as an R and this particular R is the expectation in the xk and the xkt. What is actually xk? Again it is going to be the input and xk transpose again it is going to be a transport value I mean, tran, I mean it is going to be the transpose value of that xk right. So, xk xk transpose which is actually equal to the x, uh, x I mean the what is going to be the E of 1 x 1 k up to x n k then x 1 k x 1 k into uh, x 1 k x 1 k up to x 1 k into x n k and the last term x n k x n k into x 1 k up to x n and x n k. So, this is going to be the input correlation matrix that is called R. Now, the cross correlation we are going to continue with this using this equation 4 and 5 what we can do is we can rewrite the mean square error expression of this equation 3 like this. So, here actually we are going to find out what is going to be the expectation which is going to be half into E d square, but here actually what we have seen is here I am going to write it P in terms of P and in terms of R. What is actually P and what is actually R that we have defined here. So, P is actually the d into x term and R is actually x 1 k and the x 1 k terms. So, we are going to write it P transpose w k plus 1 by 2 into w k transpose into R into w k. And now, note that since it is a quadratic function right what is meant by quadratic function it is actually a second order function. So, normally whenever we are using a second order function it will be having a bowl shaped surface something like this it will be having a bowl shaped surface in the uh, n plus 1 x 1 weight. So, that is going to be the MSC cross space. So, here actually what we are going to do is we are going to find out an error which will be having this particular shape for some values the error will be maximum for some other values the error will be maximum when I am going to continuously move this. So, I will be getting a bowl shaped and at this minimum point I will be having the minimum error. So, what is that minimum error that is what actually our interest that is what actually we are trying to find it out. Now, finding out the minimum error this is what actually we are going to do this. Now, what is the first step first to compute the gradient by straight forward differentiation of course, we are going to have a change in error change in error in the sense we are going to differentiate that is called a rate of change right. So, what actually we are going to do either the rate of change of error is going to decrease or it is going to increase right again we can call it as a uh, hill climbing algorithm right. So, for example, this is actually a hill and one person is standing here if the person is going up or going down or going in the lateral. So, we will they will be having different slope values and in all the cases how I am going to change this slope error. So, that is what actually I am going to find out. When the person is going there the slope will be increasing in that will be positive. When the person is coming down from the hill the slope will be negative. When the person is moving on the right hand side in that case the slope is going to be uh, even or it is going to be minimum. So, that is what actually we are going to find it out. Then finding the minimum error first to compute the gradient by straight forward differentiation which is a linear function of weights. So, what I am going to do the change in the error is the change in the error because of w naught right. So, w naught is actually the weight already we discussed it is not w of 0 it is w suffix 0 right. So, it is go, uh, I think you should be knowing right w of 0 is different from w suffix 0. So, when I am going to give w of 0 what does it mean? we will be having one set of weights. The first set of weight is w 0, the second set of weight is w 1, w 2 it will be going on. Here actually after all the sets I am going to select one particular set that is actually called as the w 0. So, I am going to have the fixed weight that is what. So, we are going to see what is going to be the change in the weight of w 0 for because of that what is going to be the change in the error. In a similar way for every weight right. So, what is going to be the change in the error dou e by dou w naught up to dou e divided by dou w n whatever may be the number of uh, weights are there we will be calculating this the overall the transpose and uh, this can be written as per our previous case minus p plus r into w right. 
So, already actually what we have seen what is going to be the value of P and what is the value of R. And to find the optimal set of weights, right? So, we are going to find out the optimal set of weights which is actually called as the W cap. We can call it as a W cap by simply setting this change in error is 0. Because actually what happens here? Initially the error is going to be very big. Then whenever we are going to continuously tune, then what will happen actually the error will be reducing step by step. At some point of time when the error gets to the minimum value, then there will not be any change in the error. So, in that case actually what happens? This change in the error will become 0. So, here you can see. Right. So, here this is actually the final point. When I am going to move from here to here, the error will be changing. Here it will be changing. When I am reaching the final point, then the error will be constant and the change in the error is going to be 0. So, which yields this RW cap is equal to P. So, we can equate this to 0 and from this what we can write is this RW is equal to P. This is actually the equation we can get it. And this system of equations 8 is called as the Weiner Hopp is called as the Weiner Hopp system and its solution is the Weiner solution of the Weiner filter. So, here this particular application can be used as a filter right which is useful for adaptive filters where we can reduce or we can minimize the noise signal from the original signal that is actually what we want. So, here actually this is used as a Weiner solution and this is called as a Weiner filter where the W cap can be equal to the R inverse into P and it is the point in the weight space. So, this W cap is the point in the weight space that represents the minimum mean square error. So, this is where or uh, this is actually the set of W vector where I will be getting the minimum error or the error is almost to 0. So, this is actually the finding the minimum error case. Now, computing the optimal filter where how I can deploy this for computing the optimal filter parameters. So, here first to compute the R inverse because already we have seen here it is going to be R inverse and P. So, first you have to compute the R inverse and P and substituting from the equation 9 into equation 6 already we discussed this equation from this error minimum function here right. So, we are going to compute this for a minimum number of error. So, in this case the minimum error is half into the expectation of d k square plus half into w cap t because here actually I am using the term w cap because it is the optimized error where I am going to get the minimum error w cap t transpose into r w minus p transpose into w cap which can be written as 1 by 2 into E d k square 1 by 2 into R inverse P instead of my W from this equation I am going to put W cap equal to R inverse into P. So, instead of this W cap I am going to put R inverse into P and R again for W cap I am putting R inverse into P minus P transpose again for W cap I am putting R inverse into P and which can be written as of course, you can do all these things and this can be written as 1 by 2 into expectation of d k square minus 1 by 2 into p transpose into w cap. So, this is actually the uh, value of the uh, error minimum and for the treatment of the weight update procedure, we reformulate the expression for mean square error in terms of the deviation. So, here actually I am introducing a new term called v. V is actually the actual error and uh, actual error because of this particular weight and actually the error because of this optimum weight, right. So, W cap is actually the weight where I am getting the minimum error. So, what is actually the difference of the weight vector from the Weiner solution? So, that I can find out what is the present value of the weight and what is the weight I am going to have the minimum error and what is going to be the difference. That difference is actually we are going to call it as V. So, here computing the value of R, how I am going to compute the value of R, we will be seeing this. So, the substituting W equal to V plus the W cap. In that case what happens? My error becomes the expectation of d k square plus 1 by 2 into instead of this W I am going to put V plus W cap, already we have seen this. Here actually I have the W 
and I am going to replace this with V plus W cap transpose into R plus V plus W cap. So, everywhere I am replacing W with V plus W cap minus P T into V plus W cap and this can be rewritten as uh, expectation of D K square plus 1 by 2. I am going to get this equation and after rewriting I will be getting this error minimum plus 1 by 2 into W minus W cap transpose into R into W minus W cap transpose into R into W minus W cap. So, this is actually the equation number 16 and note that since the mean square error epsilon or error way whatever it is is non-negative because we are going to take the square of it. So, every value is become positive. So, we are going to take the mean. So, it is a non-negative. We must have this V t into R v it should be greater than 0. right? So, this implies that R is a positive semi definite. Usually, however, R is going to be positive definite. What is meant by what is meant by positive definite? For any value, whatever may be the operation, if you do it, if you are getting a positive function, for example, the square function, right? Whatever may be the input given, a definite function is actually x square. So, what does it mean actually? Whatever may be the input you have given, when you take the square, the output is going to be uh, positive only. So, this function is actually a positive definite function. What is going to be positive semi definite function? For example, I am going to have x square minus something minus 4. Suppose in this case actually what happens? Suppose if the x square value is greater than 4, in that case I will be getting a positive value. Suppose if the x value is going to be 1, in that case what will happen? 1 square will be 1 minus 4, my answer is going to be minus 3, where I will be getting a negative value. So, there are some functions which is going to give always positive numbers that is called positive definite and there are some functions where I may be getting positive value or for some values I may even get some negative values. In that case, we can cal we can say it is going to be a positive semi definite, but usually the R value is always going to be positive definite. Now, we have computed the R which is going to be the positive definite. Now, I have to diagonalize the value of R, right. So, what I have to do? In that case, I have to go for a Eigen values and Eigen vectors. So, here actually I am going to have a matrix format R, which will be having the distinct Eigen values. If I compute the Eigen values for this particular R matrix, I will be having the lambda 1 values, which are going to be the Eigen values. And then we can construct a matrix Q, whose columns are corresponding to the Eigen vectors eta 1 of the R. What is actually eta? Already we have discussed, it is going to be the learning factor. And in that case, I will be having a value Q, which is equal to eta naught eta 1 up to eta n. right? So, now R can be diagonalized using an orthogonal similarity transformation as follows. So, this orthogonal similarity transformation is actually a matrix function, where I can have, I can put the lambda values in the diagonal elements only and all the remaining elements of my matrix is going to be 0. So, actually n is going to be the number of inputs or whatever it can be. In that case, whatever the Eigen vectors I am going to get right, or the Eigen values I can get, I will be putting lambda 0, lambda 1, lambda 2 up to this lambda n. So, this matrix of course, I am going to form it. And here I am going to have this R q. What is actually q? This is the Eigen values that is filled in the matrix. And what is actually R? R is going to be the eta naught, eta 1 and eta 2 up to this eta n. And when we multiply, we will be getting the diagonalized value of this. right? So, that is going to be Q inverse into R Q, which is equal to D, which is the diagonalized values of lambda 0, lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda n. And there are some observations from this, we can see it is going to be, it is usual to choose the Eigen vectors R to be orthogonal. Q, Q t inverse it's actually it is going to be an identity matrix, right? identity matrix which will be having only once, because whenever I uh, multiply a matrix by its transpose, I will be getting the identity matrix and the Q inverse is equal to Q transpose. Therefore, my R is equal to Q into D into Q transpose, which can be written as Q into D into the Q inverse, that is the inverse of the matrix. And from the equation 15, we know that the shape of this error function is a bowl shaped. Already we have discussed because it is going to be a quadratic function. Normally, the quadratic function, the output is going to be in a bowl shaped this thing. 
paraboloid with a minimum at the Wiener solution V equal to 0 that is the origin of the V space and slices of this error parallel to the W space yield a elliptic constant error contours which define the weights in the weight space that the specific value of the square error at which the slice is made. For example, the error is going to vary from here to here and at this point actually I will be getting the minimum error where I will be having the minimum error function. So, this is actually the error minimum function here and this is written as the error constant right that is actually called as the square error and at this point this error becomes constant. So, here there will not be any slope or the rate of change of error is going to be 0 in this particular case. So, half into V transpose into R V equal to the error C minus error minimum which stays constant at this point of location. And what is going to be the eigen vectors of R? It is note from the equation we are going to calculate what is going to be a minimum error that can be computed by using this equation R into V which defines a family of vectors in the V space. Now, exactly n plus 1 of these pass through the origin uh, of the V space and these are the principal axis of the ellipse. However, vectors passing through the origin must take lambda into V. Therefore, for the principal axis V prime which is R V dash equal to lambda into V dash. Clearly, V dash is the eigen vector of R. Stop here, sir. I think in this section actually we have discussed about uh, the mean square error and how to count, uh, find out the mean square error where we can find the optimized weight vector.